Welcome to Bedtime History. Hello, this is Breck. Guess what, parents? Bedtime History is now available on Story Button. Story Button is the easiest way to listen to our show without using screen devices like your phone or a tablet. Story Button is like a radio that's built for easy listening to your favorite kids' podcasts like ours. And the best part is there's no subscriptions or fees to access the content. This week, save $10 and get free shipping when you go to storybutton.com forward slash bedtime history. That's storybutton.com forward slash bedtime history. So this coming month, February, is Black History Month in the United States and Canada. Black History Month is a time for us to remember important people and events in the history of people of African descent around the world and in our countries. Black History Month can be traced back to 1926 when Carter G. Woodson founded Negro History Week to recognize the achievements made by African Americans. Carter Woodson was a Harvard University graduate, and he chose February as the month to celebrate black history because the birthdays of Frederick Douglass and Abraham Lincoln were both in February. Both of these men had worked hard in their lifetime to end slavery in America. We thought that for this month's first episode of Bedtime History, we would focus on one of the great black rights activists and civil rights leaders of American history, Martin Luther King Jr. Civil rights are the rights of citizens to political and social freedom and equality. While it may seem obvious to most of us these days that all humans should be treated equally, this was not always the opinion of many people. In fact, the fight for civil rights was a long and difficult battle and was was only successful due to the strong efforts of individuals who had a passion for helping others. One of these important people was Martin Luther King Jr. Martin Luther King Jr. was born on January 15, 1929 in Atlanta, Georgia. His dad was a pastor and his mother was a school teacher. A pastor is a minister in charge of a Christian church or congregation. Martin also had an older sister named Christine and a younger brother named Alfred. They grew up in a wealthy area of Atlanta called Sweet Auburn, where many black families lived at the time. Martin knew from a young age that he enjoyed a great childhood and a good education that not many black children in America at the time had access to. It inspired him to want to help other black children have the same opportunities to live a good life. He was also inspired by his father, who worked hard on activities to try to improve the lives of black people and achieve equality. Martin was a very good student and he worked hard to get good grades, and because of his hard work he got into college when he was 15 to study law and medicine. It was called Morehouse College and was the same college that his father and his grandfather had attended. Even though Martin did not originally plan to become a pastor like his father, he became more and more interested in religious studies and politics during his time at college. Martin decided to finish a Bachelor of Divinity degree so that he could become a pastor too. Martin was a popular student even though he was one of the only black students in a mostly white college. He finished his degree in 1948 and was elected president of his class in his final year. After he graduated, Martin moved to Boston to attend Boston University when he was 24. While he was there and studying for a higher level degree, he met Coretta Scott. Coretta was a singer from Alabama who was also in college in Boston. She was studying music at the New England Conservatory of Music. Martin and Coretta fell in love and got married in 1953. After Martin's studies were finished, they moved to Montgomery, Alabama. Martin became the pastor of a church there called the Dexter Avenue Baptist Church. He was a great pastor and had a special gift of being a very good public speaker. People always paid attention to what he had to say because he was well-spoken and delivered his sermons in a very convincing style. Martin and Coretta had been living in Montgomery for a short time when they started to have children. At the time, the city of Montgomery was 
also a center for civil rights struggle in America. The city was very segregated. This means that black and white people were divided and expected to live apart from each other. Some people challenged the rules that forced them to live apart. This led to a court decision about segregation of students in schools. The court decision decided that while black and white kids had been separated in the past, they were now allowed to go to school together. The decision was a great victory for those who wanted equality for all people and the end of segregation. However, the decision made some people who disagreed with these changes very angry. At the time, there was a lot of racism in the area. Racism means to have negative thoughts and actions towards people of a different race, based on the belief that your own race is better. The fight over civil rights grew greater in 1955. That year, a black woman named Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat to a white passenger on a bus, and she was arrested. The rules at the time said that she was supposed to sit in the back of the bus, in the segregated section for black people. However, Rosa Parks refused to go to the back of the bus to protest this rule. To protest means to do something to show you were against a rule or a law. Rosa Parks' arrest made a number of people angry. A group of activists got together and decided to stop using the bus as a protest. An activist is someone who works to bring about political or social change. Activist groups started taking more and more actions to try to change the rules that limited equality for black people and separated blacks and whites. Martin Luther King Jr. became the leader and spokesman of the activist group at the time. Martin started speaking as the leader of a group trying to fight racism and bring about equality peacefully. Martin admired Mahatma Gandhi and other peaceful activists from around the world in history. Gandhi and others were people who taught that the way to bring about real change in society was to protest, but not to be violent. Even though Martin was trying to change things peacefully, many people disagreed with him. Many of these people threatened him and his family. Some even tried to set his house on fire. This was very scary for Martin and his family, especially now that they had four young children. Even though it was a scary time for Martin and his family, they were proud of the success of their protests and how many people had joined the cause for equality. Next, Martin began traveling across America and giving talks to big groups of civil rights activists about nonviolent protest. His messages were becoming more and more popular, but also causing more and more people to be angry with him. In 1963, Martin and his friends protested segregation in Birmingham, Alabama, which was one of the most racially divided cities in the United States. Martin was arrested and had to spend time in jail. It was a sad time for him because he was away from his family, but he used this time to write letters to those who opposed him, peacefully trying to convince them of why equality was right and good. Later that year, when he got out of prison, Martin organized a march on Washington for jobs and freedom. A march is a type of protest in which people walk along public roads in an organized way to protest about something. The march was peaceful and it was attended by around 250,000 people. I have a dream that one day yes. this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Yeah. At the March on Washington, Martin gave his famous speech known as the I Have a Dream speech. It called for a peaceful world in which all people are treated as equals. Many people around the world watched Martin Luther King give this speech in person and on TV. Later that year, he was named Man of the Year by Time magazine. In 1964, Martin Luther King Jr. also became the youngest person ever to be awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. He was only 35 years old, and in August 1965, Congress passed a law that gave all black Americans the right to vote. This was a big step and would not have come about at that time if not for the hard work of Martin and his fellow activists. 
Sadly, a few years later, Martin's life and work were cut short when he was shot and killed. He was standing on the balcony of a motel in Memphis, Tennessee when someone shot him. The killer was a man that had escaped prison. He was later caught and sent back to prison. People across the country were saddened by Martin's death. The president at the time declared a national day of mourning, which was meant to be a time for the entire country to express sorrow over Martin's death. Later in 1983, the U.S. created a federal holiday in honor of Martin Luther King Jr. It is known as Martin Luther King Day and is on the third Monday of January each year. Martin Luther King Jr. was a brave and hardworking man. He fought hard for the things he believed in and to help others. He believed in equality and human rights for all people, regardless of race, ethnicity, skin color, or how rich or poor someone is. And he did so by always being peaceful himself. He was truly an incredible man. There is still much great work to be done as society works towards Martin's dream of full equality. But by learning about Martin and his life and work, you can join the conversation and become part of the efforts that are still underway in your country to bring about full and meaningful equality to all people, and the ways in which you can help society become a more peaceful, equal, and loving place. And if you haven't already heard it, I would recommend that you listen to the full audio of Martin's I Have a Dream speech. It is one of the most famous and amazing speeches of all time.